Yes, life was delayed, but it never gave the nine. Hello, 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 everybody. It's Annika LaQuette here, and you're finally listening to season two. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. I'd like to give a shout out to Miss Cotton. She was the first person to comment on last week's episode. If you want to shout out, comment on this episode. Listen, I have somebody on my show. This is my girl. I met her a while back, okay? And she is giving the community what they need. I have Miss Amani. How are you, girl? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And thank you for having me today. You're welcome. And thank you for coming on Never Gave the Nine. So <laughs> tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yes. Yeah, so my name is Imani Peterkin. I am the founder of Brown Girls of Tomorrow. I'm a wife, a mother, and I like to say I'm a serial entrepreneur as I wear many hats. And yeah, that's a little bit about who I am and what I do. Come on now. I, I believe it. I saw all the hats that you wear. Okay, girl, you <laughs> social media, everything. I read it all. Okay. And I'm so happy for you, girl. For real. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So what motivates you to start Brown Girls of Tomorrow? Absolutely. So I like to say it's a funny story, but it's not a funny story. Um, originally got the idea of Brown Girls of Tomorrow. It was originally called Girls Like Us. I was actually in college and I, I have to mention God because this is how it started. So I was at a talent show with a couple of friends and we was just watching the talent show and something just dawned on me. It was kind of like God whispering in my ear mm. and I don't even know where the mentor came from, but it came up and I was okay. like, mm, that's strange. So I tried to, I guess, try to start it when I was in college because that was something that was placed on my heart by God to do. It was just not the right time. At least right. that's what I said. I said it was not the right time. And then fast forward, I was working at Fort Jackson. And I noticed a lot of little girls like to come to me and have girl talk and just like to come to my classroom. Mm -hmm. And then God placed it on my heart again to start the nonprofit. And so I just was obedient and went ahead and went with that call. And I will say that's the best thing I could have ever done. To say yes to that call to start the mentoring program, which is now Brown Girls of Tomorrow. That's amazing. See, a lot of people don't realize it's God's timing. You think you're ready right now and then you do something and it's not going to work out the way you want it. But God said, just give it time and you did exactly what needed to be done. So I'm happy right. that you did that. Okay. That's amazing for real. So what sets you apart from other mentoring programs? Ooh, that's a lot I can say, but <laughs> I would say that we are really a family. We are really community in our mentoring program and mentoring doesn't just stop at our program. We also focus on the family as a whole and not just the youth mm. um, because we believe that if the home is not structured or the home doesn't have the tools that they need, it's hard for us to implement it into them to take home. Right. So we want to ensure that the family has resources as a whole so that what we're doing in mentoring can, I guess, translate back at home as well. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of times we find that sometimes it's, it's, we find that it's the fact that a lot of our families may not have the information or resources. And it's not yeah. that they don't want to know. It's just that they, you can't know what you don't know. Yep. So that is, that is what we focus on is the community as a whole, as well as mentoring. So mentoring is just a piece of our mentoring program. And that's what sets us apart. Yeah, you're right. I like that because you said it's like a family. That's what yes. I like. Yes. And that's what girls need, a family. They need connections. So, yes, I agree with that as well. So, that's really good. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes. So, how can parents sign their children up for your organization? Absolutely. So, they can actually sign up. We will have registration opening up very soon in the next couple of weeks on our website, which is browngirlsoftomorrow.org. And there will be a section on there on the main page where you will be able to sign your youth up for mentoring. Okay. That's good. Let me know when you do post that because I'm going to share it. Okay. You know I'm going to share it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I want to get the girls involved. Yes. So, I saw that your slogan is making an impact one girl at a time. Tell us a time where someone positively impacted your life. So I always like to say, especially in the mentoring space, where I was positively impacted and also opened my eyes to the possibilities, even HBCUs. Yes. So this goes back to elementary school. I was in a program called 21st Century. I'm not sure if they're around anymore, but they was popping back when I was in elementary school. Mm-hmm. And one of our teachers, our mentors, was 
actually a student at, at HBCU, which was Benedict College at the time. Okay. And it opened my eyes to college, HBCUs, and just Black excellence. Yes. And that changed the trajectory of, I would say, my goals and dreams and aspirations because they poured into me and not just me, but all the other students. And even though it may sound little, it was a lot. Yes. Uh, because you never know what a child is going through at home and just to be that positive light for them to see. I think that, that to answer your question, that program and that mentor specifically, which was Mr. Mike, I don't know where he is these days, <laughs> but he positively impacted my life, especially in that mentoring space. That's good. And everybody needs that, like a, at least a person. People don't realize things like happen for kids and they don't realize that the thing that you say to somebody can like impact their whole entire life. Like, right. yes. And and also I like to emphasize that college, I won't say wasn't talked about, but mm-hmm. I'm a first generation college student. So that really opened my eyes to a lot of possibilities. So yes. I do want to throw that out there, especially, you know, first generation college students having a positive role model, mentor to help guide you in that aspect. So um, I just wanted to add that little two piece. That's good. See, that's the thing. Like, you broke the mold for your family. Like, yep. I didn't hear more about that. Hold up. Tell us a little bit more about that. Like, how did you feel being a first-generation college student? It was definitely, um, I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> it wasn't just for me. Because mm-hmm. I'm also in grad school and with aspirations to get my doctoral degree. So I'll be the first doctor in my family, oh. the first grad student in my family. Come on. And I would say that that those degrees are not just for me. It's for yes. my family. And it ch- it's changing trajectory, not just for myself, but for my daughters that's coming behind me. Y'all, it's just a beautiful thing to, to like you said, break that mold in your family to see the first and to see the excitement and happiness on my mom's face, on my sister's and sibling's face, because I'm the oldest sibling. So I'm showing and leading by example to my younger siblings that are that's coming up behind me and my, my siblings and just seeing how it makes my parents happy mm-hmm. um, to see that and witness that. It's just amazing. It's an amazing feeling. It's no better feeling. Wow. Um, And I just hope to inspire not just my kids, but also the students in our mentoring program, that you can do all things and that where you start is not where you finish. And Mm. the sky's the limit. You can do anything that you put your mind to. So it's just beautiful. That's good. I'm proud of you, girl. I can't wait to see you. you. And I want a ticket to the graduation or graduation party or something. Okay, Listen, you get I that got degree. seven classes left. I got seven classes left for grad school. So, you know, I'm getting hyped right now. Yes, I can't wait to see. I'm so excited for you, girl, for real. <laughs> What's some things that negatively influence our young black girls? I'm going to have to say it. Social media. Mm. Social media is giving a false... Uh, a false image of what things are supposed to be. Right. And also trying to get them to understand that people can be anybody they want to be online. And half of the time, people are not who they actually are offline. I won't say the internet is fake, right. but you can portray to be whatever you want to be. Mm-hmm. I have to say social media because it's true. Like people showing bands, it's probably not even their bands. You don't even <laughs> know where they got it from. Okay. That's what the said, they be bands. Those are probably not theirs. And also, I think that messes with self-esteem mm-hmm. as well because they're seeing one thing and they feel like they have to compete or feeling like they have to um, be what the internet says you be to be um, because that's what's in and what's trending. Um, and also trying to get them to have better self-talk because music these days okay oh lord (laughs) music these days makes them feel like they have to be a certain kind of way yes even though that's not who they actually are so to answer your question i'm gonna have to say social media and music Mm -hmm. because that's their go-to and i also say and of course like i said internet but those two are like the top two right now that I feel mm-hmm. negatively impacting our, our youth. And I think that's where us as, I'm not old, I'm not an auntie yet. I'm only 27. But us it's as older, 28. Right, us <laughs> as older, older women are like 20s and 30s and mm-hmm. just we have to come in and show them the right way. Right. Um, And how to carry themselves respectfully. But yeah, definitely social media and and the music. 
Yes, you ain't lying. Okay. And and see, I'm gonna like kind of like shift the focus because when you say social media, okay, just imagine us like when we were growing up. I would have mm-hmm. to say like my college days. So mm-hmm. between the ages of like 21 and like 25, it's like the social media literally like it was a big thing where True. when you're in that age, it's like social media know that you graduated high school. So they like push mm-hmm. like marriages on you. They push like people having kids, buying houses. Like it mm-hmm. literally that age, like that, that age span, it like social media was like trying to push out things that you need to do this with your life. You see this person 23 and they got all this stuff. I'm like, bruh. Yeah. You know? And a lot of times what people don't understand is that just because you see people with the stuff, you don't know how they got that stuff. Come on now. I be telling and, that. Yeah. And some people may have a bigger village, bigger families mm-hmm. that can help them do certain things. Everybody's journey and direction is not going to be the same. And just because it's portrayed that way on social media, you don't know the backstory behind it. Right. Yeah, and then you know we the age where social media had just got popping. Yes, we was like preteens and teens with the Facebook and yep. all these other things. Like we the 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 baby boomers of social media. Right. So we we've seen it from the beginning until now, mm-hmm. and the impact that is having. But yeah, that social media, and that's why you have to have a strong sense of self. You do. Because if you don't, you'll easily be influenced by what you're saying online. Um, and that's something that um, we are really strongly working on with our youth. Because once you have a sense of self, can't nothing influence you to di- be redirect from who you are. Yes. So, yeah. That was good. I like that. Okay. Y'all be coming with the questions, okay? I got to get deep, okay? I love it. I yes. love it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, do you have, like, I'm sorry. Do you offer any mental health or can you provide any mental health to your girls? I'm so glad you asked that. So that is something that we are newly implementing um, mm-hmm. mental health services. We also offer life coaching services. I also want to say that also sets us apart because I'm a certified life coach. We have a counselor already on our board and we're looking to add more counselors on our board to help with the mental health aspect. Okay. And as somebody that previously I just transitioned out of public health um, and what I noticed especially since the pandemic is the increase in mental health numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why we're really focusing on that mental health piece. Um, not just for our girls, but also our families. Again, back to families. So to answer your question, yes, we do. I um, mean, we also offer life coaching as well. And that helps with the goal setting and everything else. That's good. A lot of people really know that because people want to bring their kids to an organization. And they're like, what does this organization offer? So that mental mm-hmm. health is very important, okay? So yes, right. our girls need some mental health. So I like and that, that. Is a, and that is a key focus area for our program. That's good. I like that. Mm-hmm. See, and you want see, I'm, I'm telling you, there's going to be some other organizations and also other businesses who need, like, kids involvement, and also they're going to ask for your services. So I'm definitely going to recommend you, okay? Oh, so nice. yes, okay? Because people love to get mental health services and also mentorship yes. for kids. So... I like that. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to do that. Yes, I'm going to have to recommend you. And also my mama as well. She loves helping the kids out. We would love to have her. Okay. We would love to have her. There seems to be a lot of troubled teens in South Carolina. Um, What do you think that is? I always say this in any community meeting I go to. I feel like there's not enough for our youth to do. Mm. So when there's nothing for them to do, they're going to get into stuff. Because what else is there for them to do? You know, I feel like if we had more, I understand we have mentor programs, but I mean on a social aspect, somewhere where they can possibly socialize in a positive setting, Mm -hmm. something that's constructive to their future, but not also teaching at them. Right. So I feel like there's not enough things for them to do. And then on top of that, I just feel like, choose my words kindly but i feel <laughs> like a lot of the times they're they're afraid to come to people because everybody's always talking about those bad youth or right whatever the case they're feeling judged so they don't feel i won't say but they don't feel comfortable coming to people to talk to them before getting into stuff 
But the top thing is there's not enough things for our teens to do. There's a lot for our young kids to do, but not a lot of things for our young our youth to do, if that makes sense. Yes. If there's not for them to do, I mean, you're just leaving the door open right. for them to get into stuff. And also, I'm going to also bring you back to music because music is influencing certain behaviors. You're right. And when there's not a balance of positive role models and influences, I mean, you leave it again, leaving the door open to other things happening. So not enough positive influences per se, or not enough knowledge of where to find those positive influences, because there are a lot of great programs or organizations that's out there. Mm-hmm. It's just letting them have the access or resources or them being able to access the resources um, and just not having anything positive to do in the community. Yeah, you're right about that. There's a lot of crazy music out. I ain't gonna name no names, but yeah, we know who, you know what I'm talking about. It's it's a lot yeah. of yeah, and then not only that, I feel like of course it's the music, but also what the parents allow the kids to listen to, like, right. and then think it's cute when they're singing the lyrics. Like, oh my and god, also, that's so cute. And also, if they're listening to the music, understanding that this is not real life, right? Like. You know, that's the part and you know, our youth are very are at an age where they're impressionable <laughs> um, and where they want to fit in. And if they don't have, like I said previously, if they don't have positive influences and a positive self-worth about themselves, it's easy for them to get influenced to do the wrong things. Yes. And that's where positive role models come into play. Yes, you're right. So, um, let's see. So we was talking a little bit more about like, self-esteem a little bit so tell us like what advice would you give someone who has self-esteem issues i can give you some some activities too in there okay so the first thing is i would say i also have a journal for this but also i would say to dive deep into self Mm. find what makes self happy what what brings you joy what gives you excitement to wake up in the morning and I also like to say, speak positively to yourself. We are really big on affirmations in our program uh, because what you speak to yourself is how you're going to feel. Okay. Right. So if I wake up in the morning, like, I'm that girl. Like you will see me on social on. media always, always saying that. I'd be like, you that girl, you need to remember that. Like positively speaking to, into yourself daily, not just in the morning, but throughout the day. Right. And do stuff that make you feel good, okay? And that could be getting your hair done, Mm because I would say your hair is done, you feel good, because I know I do. Okay. Um, (laughs) And just doing what makes self feel good. Not what makes other people feel good, but what makes you feel good Mm -hmm. and what makes you happy. And that could be an activity. Like, for instance, I feel the best, you know, and, and what makes me feel good and confident, too. This is a little nerd moment, a little nugget, <laughs> but I like to play instruments. Okay. And to me, that's therapeutic for me. And it just makes me feel good. And building my self-esteem, too, I always like to try things that I've never done before. Mm-hmm. Whether that's, like, I done tapped a little bit into, like, taking photos and taking okay. selfies. Like, oh, girl, you look good today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. all about doing what, what self feels. And also... Like I said, I have a journal where you dive deep into self to kind of discover more what makes self feel good and what helps build your self-esteem. I also say this too. Doing stuff that makes you feel good, like in business. If I close the deal, dang, girl, you did that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's different ways that you could um, build your self-esteem. But I also, I'm I'm just really big on them affirmations. Because once you know you that girl... Listen, can't nobody tell you nothing because I've been that girl. Mm-hmm. And walk with your head up high when you're saying that because, listen, it will make a, a world of difference what you speak into yourself. Yes, you're right. Affirmations, I love it. I tell people that all the time. Send people like messages of affirmation. So, yeah, mm-hmm. me and you agree. We're here. We are here because I'm the same yes. way. Okay. Yes. Yes. So, do you have, like, any programs or any events coming up that you would like to share with us? So, we did just partner with a charter school, which is Clear Dark Charter School, and we have opened up our first clothes and food closet <laughs> on the campus of a school. So, that's super exciting. Yeah. We're also working to implement our mentoring program in a, in Clear Dot. So, that will be our first school that we will be offering mentoring in school. 
um, which is the first of many. So that's just a little tidbit of that part of us branching out into schools and making an impact, not just in community, but in schools as well. <laughs> and we are currently working to try to coordinate a food donation drive but it's going to be like a packing party. So it's going to be like okay. community service, but a party. And the goal of that is to be able to package up enough boxes for our students at our schools before Thanksgiving break mm. so that they have meals while they're out of school. So I'm excited about that. Okay. And we also will be introducing our teen talks which I'm super excited about. It's not just for our kids and our program, but it will be open to the community. So all you mm. will be invited. That's good. And this will not be more so of a talking session, but this is a social setting where we're going to be having conversations about what's trending, um, about real life e events. And the focus of that is to help our youth communicate effectively, conflict resolution, and just to be able to have a dynamic uh, um, together. So I'm excited about Teen Talks, and yeah, those are like the highlights, okay. I will say. And we are also planning our college tour. We did it, not last year, but the year before, and we're trying to do a big and take it home. We're trying mm -hmm. to go to Atlanta. Okay, Atlanta. Clark Atlanta and Spelman <laughs> are our two schools that we're working on raising funds um to make that trip possible and our goal is to be able to take at least 15 girls to those college tours okay uh, so i'm super excited we want to do this every year and our goal also by the end of the tour is to offer scholarships to two students um so we need the community's help to yes. raise funds to make that happen and so that's that's all i got for right now those are the major things that's coming up and happening Yes, come on, because see, you have a lot going on. College tours, teen things, like, come on. Okay. And that's a few that's a few on the horizon, but yeah, so just stay tuned. That is just the first of many things that's to come. I'm super excited to see where God takes this program and our youth I'm through mentoring and sisterhood. We big on sisterhood, yes. so that's the that's the tea. That's the little sneaks, because some of that ain't been out to the public oh, yet. So come you on, get exclusive. the first... All right. Yeah, you're getting it exclusive right now. Yes. I'm so happy for you, girl. So um, do you have like any social media or your website? Give us a little shout out for your business. Okay, so you can find Brown Girls of Tomorrow at browngirlsoftomorrow.org. You can find us on Instagram at browngirlsoftomorrow. You can also find us on Facebook at browngirlsoftomorrow. And I think that's it. And even if you go on Google, you can Google <laughs> us, Brown Girls of Tomorrow, and you will see all things Brown Girls of Tomorrow. The best place to stay tuned and get the latest updates is on our website and our Facebook and Instagram page. And yeah, and we are hashtag BGOT for short, and I'm just excited. Yes, come on, girl. Thank you so, so much. Okay, because one, y'all, okay, before I even close this out, I gotta give her a shout out because without her, I would not be on that magazine, Canvas Rebel. Okay, she, when I tell you, she just brought life into me because I was at a point where I was like, dang, am I impacting people's lives? Like, what, you know, is this like, and in vain? And right? This. And then you said, okay, I'm gonna recommend her. I didn't even know you was recommending me. So, Thank you so much. Girl. You are well deserving and I'm big on giving people their flowers while they're here. Mm -hmm. And this podcast that you created, I love it. Like, keep doing your thing, keep striving. And that's something that I'm big on. Women empowering women, yes. girls empowering girls because listen, you is really that girl. <laughs> Come on now. And I'm big on pouring into other women and I'm just excited to see where God takes your, your podcast and the impact that you continue to make. Um, And just keep being you. That's so amazing. Thank you, girl. You're welcome. Yes. So I want to thank you so, so much for coming on Never Gave Tonight podcast today. Thank you so much for having me. It has been a pleasure. Tune in to next week's episode as we talk to Anika, owner of Rare Flame Candles. And remember, yes, life was delayed, but it never gave a night. I am your host, Annika Laquette, and you're listening to Never Gave a Night podcast. Bye.